Uh, okay, we're recording now. Andy, I'll make you co-host. No, Lynn, co-host. I'm making Andy co-host. I'll make you host. Oh, great. Got it. I wanted to give a heads up. I'm going to have to switch to phone for a brief moment uh, around 1.15 until about maybe 1.45, just for a little bit. I'll still be here. I'll just be on the phone. Got it. You're all set, folks. Take care. Thanks, yeah, Thank you. Enjoy. All right, Andy? So we are. Uh, it's frozen. Are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, I am going to call the Finance Committee meeting of June 9, 2023 to order. And it is uh, 1 p.m., the time noticed for the meeting. Uh, this meeting is uh, being held by Zoom. Uh, members of the public you have access to the meeting via Zoom and by Amherst Media, um, but uh, everybody should be advised that this meeting is being recorded, both video and audio, and um, an explanation uh, uh, for those in the public who may not be aware, uh, the staff uh, is unavailable today, so Sean and Athena, who are usually um, supporting the committee, are not here, but we're going to go ahead with the meeting to do as much as we can today and uh, uh, follow the agenda um, for the significant items, uh, I think, except for one, which is um, the review of the third quarter FY23 revenue and expense report that is going to be postponed to another meeting because we do need um, staff from the finance department, uh, both our uh, comptroller and uh, our uh, finance director present. Andy, I just want to mention that, however, if people have questions they'd like answered in advance of our next meeting, please go ahead and forward them to Andy and Sean. And uh, we will get make sure that those are available to the public, uh, possibly by reporting them again at the next meeting or including any responses to the packet. Um, so with that said, I need to go through the um, list of people here just to confirm that everybody can hear and be heard. And uh, so I'll, as I usually do alphabetical by last name. Um, so Anna. Hello, everybody. I can hear you. And Lynn. I'm present. Bob. Here. Matt. Present. Uh, Bernie. Present. Kathy. Here. And yes, I'm present. And <laughs> Alicia had indicated to me that she is uh, expecting to be able to join us by 1.30, that she uh, cannot join earlier. but. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try and uh, move this meeting along because I know that a uh, number of people have other things going. And uh, so what I'm going to do is look at the participant list and see if there's anybody. Um, at this point only, I think there's one person present in the audience. Uh, if uh, um, Anybody who's on uh, watching uh, at any time uh, would like to add, but uh, if you're interested in public comment, please raise your hand so that we can bring you into the room. Seeing that there's not a request that the hand has not gone up, I'm going to assume that um, there's no request for public comment for today. And um, therefore, what we want to do, um, I'm going to um, postpone the counselor compensation proposal uh, until Alicia is here, since she's one of the two co-sponsors. Um, Michelle uh, cannot be here. Uh, Michelle said some comments which have been added to the packet for the meeting. So, um, because uh, uh, our matter of public interest and those comments to a committee, 
um, and therefore um, they are in the packet. Anybody who wants to see her comments can find uh, that we were offered to the committee just this morning, uh, can find them. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's the conversation we're going to come back to. And um, therefore, I want to turn to the review and recommendation of Council Order 2407B, which is a request of the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee. And um, the uh, memorandum explaining the order and the order are in the packet also available for everybody. And we're also in the packet for the council meeting on Monday. Um, just uh, briefly, just as a reminder what this is about, uh, that the uh, Community Preservation Act Committee had been holding funds aside to address a request that they were uh, very interested in but there was insufficient information for them to make a recommendation. At the time they made their recommendations and there's still insufficient um, information available. And um, if uh, the money that is being held aside is not transferred to a specific reserve account before the end of the year, it will not become available until the um, next round of the process um, so that uh, their request is to um, do as requested in the order, and that is to make a transfer of the funds um, into a special reserve for FY24, which is, of course, the year that's coming up. Um, otherwise, uh, so that they wouldn't have to be held for expenditure until FY25. Um, funds are um, if they don't make a recommendation, then they would ultimately fold back into um, the funds that are available for FY25 distribution, but the order gives them the extra flexibility, and that is the request of the CPA committee. Um, are there any questions about this request or any thoughts about it? Andy, I can't raise my hand because I'm showing my screen. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just want to mention the reason I think we should support this is because periodically um, we have had off cycle requests for CPA money. And if there's, and this would allow that money to be available for that. Two examples of the off cycle requests, one was for Kendrick Park for a matching grant. And the other one was when we uh, quickly bought the land on Belchertown Road for affordable housing. Anna has her hand up. Yeah, Anna. Lynn, I have a question about those two. Um, this is, I mean, this is a reserve for a specific project. It's not just a, a empty reserve for off-cycle requests. Um, the other two, the Belchertown Road and Kendrick Park, were those done in a similar fashion? Um, with the request to finance for re a reserve intended for a specific project for the specific amount. I don't remember, I was on CPA at that time. And so I don't remember, um, or for the Belchertown Road, not for Kendrick. Oh, no. So what happened was they actually came forward when the new CPA money was available, That's uh, but they this did come to finance for review. Absolutely, but it's a little bit of a different type of reserve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that the other thing about those two examples that you gave is that uh, both of them were significant expenditures that involved um, indebtedness. Right. And uh, since we were mm -hmm. taking out loans, it was not actually expenditures in the year that uh, we were making the decision, but it was expenditures in future years. Um, I don't think that they, I don't think that the order specifically um, mentions the one um, item that they um, had been discussing from the last round. So if it moved into an FY uh, twenty four 
budgeted reserve uh, for Community Preservation Act purposes. I think that it could be used for any uh, FY24 expenditure if they was to recommend. And I do have to um, point out that um, they may make a recommendation, but it still has to go back to this committee and to the council for ultimate approval so that um, there's nothing that's, uh, you know, there, uh, we as a um, committee and the council um, after us are not giving up our role to review any recommendation made. Uh, Kathy? Yeah, I was going to underscore what you just said, Andy. Anna, you had said it's for a specific purpose, but it's not, even though they discussed a potential purpose. And one of the other things about, um, I have been the liaison, although I'm not going to be in the future, is in the past, they had to, because they had potentially underspent in a particular category, they had to reserve it for historic or for something else. This time they had they met all the 10% of this, 10% of that. So it could be a general reserve. And this, I know this has been done in the past. You know, they, you know, it's basically it, it I think it's a good policy because you don't want to have the CPA this year wasn't an example of that. In a year where there aren't terrific proposals, you don't want them spending the money just to spend it out. So being able to have a reserve for the following year, and there was one year a few years ago that that reserve became really important to then finance some larger projects. Um, so I think this is a good policy. This was not one of the years where they were under underproposed. They had more than enough to spend all their money. Um, and they had to cut, they had to trim multiple projects. So I just want to, and Anna, it's, it's written to be general. And I think it's deliberate because they weren't even sure the one thing that they were interested in is going to be able to come back anywhere near this kind of a price tag. So. Yeah, that, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I, I, the memo and the order are obviously different, um, different framings of this request. So, um, anything else on it? Otherwise, I'll, I'll hold my question till after Bob. Okay, Bob. Yeah, I, I, I support this. Actually, Kathy answered my question. The, the issue is whether we can do this or not, and it seems like we can. So, um, I, I think it's a, a good idea to do it. So Anna, you have, did you have something? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I have more general, I, I support this. I think that it's it's great and I, CPA is one of my favorite things. And so I, I definitely am excited about providing more opportunity through it. Um, I think I just have like logistical questions about how this functions, but I think those are more appropriate for me to talk to Kathy as the liaison offline and get a better understanding about at some point. Yeah, well, and I can- okay, Kathy, I can call you at some point. <laughs> No, but not, when I watched what the committee did way back when is the reserves get held. And so when they start their deliberation, and they usually start a little bit um, in September to say, how much money do we have? Sonia would put up and we have this reserve held over, you know, so that it's got a FY. It's each year is how much you've collected and they never know exactly what the state appropriation would be they always can assume it and so far the state has not done what it did multiple years ago which is cut um so so it's like about how much money do we have to work with um when they start to open up for it but yeah it gets carried on the books as a as what it says here as a reserve okay Matt? I just will say as and in no surprise, but I think it would have been nice to have Sean here to explain this because when I look at the memo, I, it seems to me it's kind of a, a, essentially an accounting function. Um, they weren't allowed to make the award or, or not. I'm sorry. They were they were they did not want to make the award. They had a conditional award that they didn't want to make this year. And had they not created this special reserve account to hold that those funds, those funds would have been frozen for for an entire year, I, I think. As, as I read it, it was just kind of an accounting move that seemed sound, but I, you know, don't, who am I? I, I don't know. So 
I, I but I, I think as I read it, it's pretty straightforward. If Kathy feels the same, I, you know, I'm very comfortable with it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, let me. So this is what I'm summarizing here. And that is while they want to hold these reserves into this coming year on with the possibility that the church might come back with an acceptable proposal. The reality is if they don't, this way the money is generally available as well. It is an accounting move. Yep, that's accurate. Matt? Matt, are you frozen? Oh, okay. Your hand is still still up. Okay. Okay. So So, um, uh, Andy, do you want me to make a motion or do you want to do it? Um, well, I think that the motion would be um, that the Finance Committee recommend to the Council adoption of Council Order 2407B in order appropriating the FY24 Community Preservation Act budget as required under MGL Chapter 44B. Second. So there's been a motion that's made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing no request for further discussion, um, I'll start with uh, Lynn. Aye. Um, Bob? Support. Matt? Support. Bernie? Support. Kathy? Yes. I'm a yes. Uh, Alicia has not joined us yet, so she's at this point absent. Anna? Aye. So, um, of council members, it is four to zero with one absent in the support of three resident members. And um, I think that we can um, go on to at least one other item that isn't going to take very much time. Unless, and then I'm going to see if there's anything that was not anticipated that you want or any members want to raise. But um, you have three sets of minutes that were submitted to us, and I have reviewed them and made some very minor suggestions in an amended version that is in the packet. So it's available to the public. Um, and those are. March 7, 2023, February 21, 2023, and March 21, 2023. Is there, are there other suggestions for those minutes? Um, Then I would make a motion to adopt them as amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay, um, so um, that said, if there's no- Andy, I have, I have just one question. That is not all the minutes we have in the packet. So you've just picked out a few. Um, well, I was gonna ask that in a minute, but- Okay, um, not, I, I'm, fi- I'm fine with voting on this set, but I was just wondering whether that means the others are being carried over or what did that mean? I that, think it's that, a question. I would- uh, unless somebody wants to make a motion, um, has reviewed them and feels comfortable enough with them to make a motion. I have not done my review, but if somebody else has reviewed them and is comfortable making a motion, I certainly will recognize it, but why don't we deal with the motion on the floor first? Okay, thank you. Um, Yeah, so uh, Bob? Support. Matt? Support. Uh, Bernie? Support. Kathy? Yes. I'm a yes. Uh, Alicia is still absent. And uh, Anna? Aye. And Lynn? Aye. So again, it's uh, four to zero with one member absent of voting of the councilor members in support of the three resident members. Um, at this point, I believe that um, we still, as an attendee or panelist, do not yet have Alicia. And uh, it's not quite 1.30, so um, 
this amount of time that she has said. I before I, I will go ahead and start the discussion in a moment if there's no other issues, but are there any other issues that people would like to bring up uh, that is unanticipated business, Kathy? I don't think it's unanticipated. I would just like to know if we have another meeting in June and if we have any meetings in July. So just, just uh, uh, and what day and what time they might be. And I'm, I, and so I'll make one. Um, if you're going to have another meeting in June with a postpone, I'm probably going to miss it, but um, I'm not sure that Friday works well for people. So if there's a meeting in July, so I, I just, it's very useful for my calendar um, to hold a date, even if we cancel it. Yeah, that, of course, is one of the agenda items, uh, regular meeting schedule for the remainder of 2023. It kind of fits into that classification on the agenda, so it's actually a noticed item. Um, I was anticipating that we would have a very brief discussion when we, we had Alicia present because we know that she's the one who has some, um, a complicated schedule that tried to work around and uh, we understand that uh, there's been some um, changes in uh, her availability, but we don't have any specific information without her presence. Okay. So I do want to come back to that. And uh, I think the only other item that I would have that I'm going to call on anticipated because it really came out of the uh, Gazette article that was, uh, I think, was 48 hours ago uh, about uh, the Community Preservation Act. Um, and uh, it was just noting that uh, there is an advoc advocates are very concerned that, that not enough CPA money is being allocated. And um, we're in what I would call the gold star community group uh, of uh, municipalities that have met that um, threshold on a continuous basis. And uh, so that uh, it was not the issue. Um, when it was um, reported on, on WUR, they raised an additional issue and that is that um, it became uh, clear, at least in that reporting, um, that the uh, real estate industry is campaigning uh, against um, the requests of Amherst and other communities for a real estate transfer fee for this purpose and uh, wanting to make sure and they're touting uh, CPA as the answer, and I just, it's not that we can do anything about it, but I thought it would be uh, something that uh, committee members at least would want to know about for future discussions. Anna? Sure. So as one of the uh, co-sponsors of our, our home rule, I feel like I want to say, I have to say something here. Um, I mean, I think it's really important to remember that this is a strong lobbying group in Massachusetts that's doing this this work, right? And um, and not forget the source of the information. Uh, CPA is an incredible funding source for so many different things, and CPA alone cannot cover the needs of housing in our communities. So to say that we should be draining our CPA funds entirely on housing pulls from a lot of really wonderful, worthwhile projects. And communities like Amherst are utilizing CPA the way it's intended, giving a lot to affordable housing and still seeing that that is not enough, right? So for me, things like transfer fees are, are that support affordable housing, like ours, like Joe's bill, all of these are really important because we, with all of the costs escalating and the, with the need level that we see, Unless CPA was to become solely dedicated to housing, which I do not, I strongly believe that should not be the case, um, we need an additional fund. So I, I really, you know, it's frustrating to me to see that the advocacy uh, against these, these transfer fees is saying just use CPA when 
we know that they could use all of the CPA funding and still need more. That's all. Bernie? Yeah, and another another piece of this would be that there are a significant number of communities in the state that are setting aside their 10% for housing and CPA and not spending it. Um, so it's I think it's appropriate if we went back to our friends in the legislature and say tariff those communities who aren't using their CPA money to uh, to, to create affordable housing. Um, you know, it just builds up and builds up and builds up. There should be some limit to it. The other elephant in the room here, um, which our, our friends, the realtors, won't probably want to talk about, is the uh, zoning issues. I mean, we're, uh, I, I just read a report in Connecticut. You know, it's something like 90% of the land in Connecticut is zoned for single family housing. Um, I don't think Massachusetts is quite that bad, but I think as long as we continue to have large lot single family housing zoning, um, we're going to have a tough time anywhere building more housing, um, uh, affordable housing. When, you've, when you have to pay $150,000 for a lot, you can't build an affordable house. Simple as all that. So um, uh, yeah, I think uh, Anna, thank Anna for her comments. And uh, uh, I, I do have some concerns about, and I worked in a couple of those communities where they've got lots of money set aside for affordable housing and not spending it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, th uh, thank you for your, everyone for their comments. I just wanted to um, sort of raise, uh, just make everybody aware of the issue. I don't think that we're in a position to do more than we've already done, which was to recommend to the council uh, that the council submit the bill, which it did in a timely fashion. And, uh, you know, beyond that, it's now um, out of the committee's um, work load at the moment. I mean, it might come back when we get the next round of CPA requests uh, and we get back into an affordable housing discussion then. But at this point, we're just trying to keep ourselves well informed and go on. Bob. I just wanted to note that um, I just saw that uh, in now it's in, in Amherst Hills, which is a very, very high-end development, but a lot is now $300,000. <laughs> so we're not going to get affordable housing on a $300,000 lot. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, we are aware that a lot of times Community Preservation Act money has been used to acquire land uh, because of this, and then uh, a partner comes in to do the actual uh, project and they go to uh, what was EOCD um, for, and other sources for additional funding. It's now, of course, community development and housing are separate departments that, uh, with new administration. Kathy? Yeah, just um, as long as we're having this general conversation, um, one of the issues when you talk about the piece of land is how much how much housing you put on that land. So one of the ways the affordable housing developers have done this is they bought a piece and they've got a waiver for density on on it, and then they get a lot of state money to make it affordable. So this new one that's coming in in Ball Lane, they were going to do some market rate. It's a they're all duplexes. They were going to add some market rate duplexes and when they priced out the cost of making the duplex, it was going to be too expensive. It was going to be too expensive for anyone to buy it. So they're only doing affordable units because the market rate would have been 350 400,000 and those are what the um, duplexes are going up in Deerfield and Sunderland, um, and it's a combination of land price and construction. So it's it's the as soon as someone's not with CPA money plus state money, um, it does something both to the price of the rent and the price of the property um, that's beyond beyond the reach of what people are thinking to get half a house. Um, so it was pretty startling. We asked why you're not doing market rate. And they said, because the market, the market rate would have been too high for people to want to buy in. And we didn't want to have any, didn't want to have any empty units. They need 
they need them all to be occupied. So it was an interesting um, instruction uh, insight. Uh, well, yeah, no, thank you for reminding of this. And I know that because it's your district, you're paying close attention. Your district in your neighborhood, I think. Yeah, you know, it's, it is both. But, you know, one of the things I thought was curious about the advocacy report around housing is they didn't advocate more state money going into CPA for affordable or more state money going into renovate existing units for solar and for um, it, for heating efficiency. So if there were specific ads on to CPA that enabled people to do that with our existing units, the cost, the utility costs in those units would be lower. You know, so I think there are some policies that the report just said, we need more housing, we need more money. So it would have been nice to also see where the money could come from to help municipal governments. Um, and that part didn't seem to be there. Yeah, I call on Anna and then uh, since it's 1.30, I think we should move on to council compensation so that we can get to our last agenda item. Because I, um, but Anna. Thanks Andy. Thanks Andy. I think something that's also interesting is we look at the amount of funding and not at the amount of affordable housing created, right? So uh, Pelham is lauded as a really, as you know, doing the highest in the area for CPA, which is amazing. I am not out here to knock Pelham. Pelham's great. We love Pelham. But if you look at the number of units created versus the number of units created in other towns or in Am like, like Amherst, um, to Kathy's point, or no, sorry, to Oh, I don't know whose point it was, sorry, but whoever was talking about getting a waiver, right, for density, um, yeah. I think it was Kathy, if getting a waiver for density, Amherst has been putting up, the, the sheer number of units Amherst has been putting up, I would argue, outpaces most of those other towns. And so it's, an interesting, to con it's interesting to consider the amount of funding, but also who's housing the most people, right, per, per capita and, and for the amount of land we have. Um, I just I think that that's something that hasn't been looked into. We just look at the, you know, the minimum of 10 percent and Amherst doing a lot higher than that, which is great. But I think it's also important to consider the number of units that have been produced, which hasn't necessarily been examined. Good point. Uh, Lynn? Yeah, I just want to, again, um, recognize that Pelham has finally moved forward with some affordable housing. The reason their number is so high is that all of a sudden they just did it this year. And yep. so, um, but the good news is they did it unlike several other communities near us. So I don't know, we can go further into this and uh, it is past the time that- uh, And there's Alicia. Yes, Alicia is here. Your timing is perfect, Alicia. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. So um, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Uh, as you're aware, Michelle cannot join us today. And um, so we have essentially disposed of uh, most other business except for two items, um, which we wanted to hold until 1.30 when you said you could be here. One is counselor compensation and the other is uh, scheduling of future meetings for the months ahead because we uh you know you're we we're, we uh understand your schedule is very complicated and wanted to um, hold that conversation until you're here we did um vote on the community preservation act funds the minutes we've asked for public comments so that we've taken care of other issues and of course the third quarter report is uh being postponed till the next meeting um so um I guess uh, maybe I should uh, offer you the opportunity as the one co-sponsor of the um, proposal um, to have the opportunity to speak first if you would like, though you don't need to. I just am offering it. Um, yeah, thank you, Andy. I think I don't have too much to say only because I think everything that I said during the first reading um, of this proposal still stands, and I would be happy, like, if anyone has any questions for me, 
But I did want to quickly reference um, the report that did come from the Northampton Working Group in terms of their counselor compensation and to just emphasize that that seems to be even more compelling to me of a reason for us to look at increasing our counselor stipends, um, specifically that what mine and Michelle's proposal was to bump us up to match what Northampton's current pay is, and they're looking at doubling what their current pay is. Um, so I think this just gives us an even more compelling reason to look at bumping up to what Northampton is currently offering, even while they're looking at offering even more. Um, and so again, I would just be happy to listen if anyone has any questions, and I'm really interested to hear what other um, counselors think about this. Okay, um, I'm going to open it up for any comments from other members of the committee then. Bob. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I missed the, the, the meeting where this was first introduced. Um, uh, Alicia, I, I have a question. Would Would this increase in the stipends make a difference for people who now can't afford to serve on the on the town council, um, or do we have to really go much higher in order to make that happen? Um, thank you, Bob. That's a really good question. So, in my opinion, I think we would have to go higher. Um, but in speaking with and working with Michelle, this was our agreement in terms of trying to keep it conservative on our budget because we do we are aware of our budget constraints and we think that taking a huge jump at one time might not be the wisest decision. And that's why we also are recommending that there be a way for us to more regularly look at and evaluate what the compensation is. But we thought that at least an initial boost would definitely increase the, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion in terms of people who would be able to run for council because it is very time consuming. Um, and a lot of different kinds of people don't have the ability to volunteer. Yeah, and, and I, I wanted to just kind of note, I believe in Northampton, they hadn't changed the compensation since 2014 or something like that. It's been a long time since they raised uh, the, the stipend, so, or the, they proposed to raise them. Um, so just, I think that's a good idea to uh, look at this more frequently than every nine or 10 years. So that's it. Bernie? Yeah, I um, back of the envelope um, calculation, I think the uh, counselor stipend right now, and they refer to as salaries and they're not because counselors really aren't employees and you, you don't get paid by the hour. You, you get paid the stipend whether you show up or not. And, whether you work really hard or you work not at all. Um, but I think looking at the $5,000 figure, I mean, that really adjusting for inflation, that's probably what I was making as a uh, member of the Belchertown Board of Selectmen 30 years ago. So uh, yeah, I think um, uh, I think an increase is in order. And um, I, I do think that, um, uh, you know, the, a boost, uh, maybe a boost even to the level that Northampton is suggesting is 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 in order as well. Um, I don't find any evidence that increasing compensation for increasing the stipends is going to um, gonna have an impact on um, uh, the diversity of the council. Uh, there's no, that I can find, there's no um, uh, there, there's no research that's been done at a local level. And if you look at it at the state level, it doesn't work that way because when you uh, raise compensation, you you in, you broaden the pool overall of people who are are uh, are, are willing to uh, willing to run for office. Um, but I, that doesn't mean I'm opposed to you know these increases. Like I said, adjusted for inflation, it's you're getting what I got 30 years ago. Um, I have not um, a problem with health insurance uh, for uh, elected officials. I think uh, uh, the table that Sean gave us uh, <clears throat> shows health insurance for the council, but we'd also have to, if I'm reading 32B correctly, we'd also have to uh, 
uh, provide that to school committee members or any elected official who gets a stipend. Uh, so that's a real wild card in terms of our costs um, and, and being able to being able to control it and predict it. Um, you know, whereas a, a stipend for counselors is is a predictable thing. We know year to year to year we're going to have 13 counselors. We're going to have to have this amount of money. Uh, I'm also uh, ambivalent about the, uh, the family care um, piece of it. I think that the uh, uh, stipend should be sufficiently large that it covers um, a variety of expenses um, that someone who's holding a, an elected office might, uh, on, a, on a local basis, might uh, might might encounter. Um, I know that. Um, Paul said that uh, there'd be a trial program this year, uh, this coming year, He's, it's in the budget. Um, but again, the, uh, the information that Sean's provided us uh, doesn't include the school committee or the Jones Library trustees, which Paul said would be included in that pilot. So these numbers are, uh, are, are not accurate. Um, uh, again, or need to be adjusted. So again, in terms of in terms of increasing comp uh, increasing the uh, the, the uh, stipend, uh, please, uh, I'm all for that. But for the other two pieces, I uh, would probably not support them at this time. And I know we I know we gave uh, I know we gave uh, uh, assistance to town meeting members for for uh, for family care, but town meeting members weren't compensated to begin with. So it's a little bit of a difference. Uh, Linda, you've talked with Paul about uh, what he's included in the budget and how he intends to proceed, I assume, or not? Yeah. Uh, so let me just, I, I, all I want to talk about at this moment is the family care, or otherwise labeled child care, but it should be labeled family care. Uh, and that is that that has been put in the budget. That budget is the budget that we have it's been put into the FY24 budget. That is the budget that this committee has recommended to the town council. It was on the town council's agenda on Monday night. That particular issue was clarified that uh, on Monday night that that money would be available as of July 1 for any counselor. And um, I didn't clarify whether it would be available for other elected officials. Uh, and it was put in, if you will, as kind of a pilot program, but it was based on, in fact, Bernie going back to town meeting, uh, where we already had that kind of fund for town meeting. So my understanding is that the town manager felt comfortable putting it in the FY budget, FY24 budget. So that budget, is coming up on Monday night for approval by the town council. Um, and if it is approved with that in there, then that piece of this proposal, though not a robust amount, is in there as a way of at least starting to get some barometer on what the real need and would be for people. I, I also wanna just go back and, and on that issue while I'm on it. Uh, and that is that I think we can look upon counselor salaries in any numbers way ways uh, as to what we think they should pay for or not pay for or what they compensate for or what they don't compensate for. But I actually believe that family and child care is separate. Bernie? Uh, yeah, um, I, I, I supported the, the budget so that the five thousand dollars that's in there as a pilot. I mean, I, I supported it. Um, I'm not convinced that it's a way to go. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And again, um, town meeting members, and I was one, um, <laughs> weren't compensated at all. So uh, uh, I think there's a there's a difference there. My um, my thing is is let's try to make the stipends at a fair and reasonable amount that's predictable year to year to year so we can budget. Um, so it'll be interesting to see at the end of the year what happens with the family care. And I'm not, uh, again, I'm, um, I've been there. <laughs> you know, I was fortunate enough to have uh, um, a, uh, uh, you know, a situation where uh, 
I received a lot of a lot of support. I also can tell you that as an elected official, I probably spent more money than I received from the town of Belchertown. Uh, I certainly spent more vacation time on the town than I did on myself. So, so I, I understand some of this, uh, some of this push and pull. And I'm, uh, my my point is, is that there really needs to be an adequate stipend. So. Go upstairs. I don't know. Andy, do you want to call on Alicia? I did. I thought. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to respond to, to Bernie's comment because I, I really definitely hear where he's coming from. And so I wanted to share just that that came up in the conversation that Michelle and I had uh, when we were looking at this proposal because my initial thought was to just give away higher stipend and a stipend that would be able to cover all things. But that made it a little bit more complicated because when we're talking about child care, um, and stipends, we're then talking more about looking at hourly, like how many hours are counselors spending in meetings, and then how much hourly or will they be paying for childcare? And then we don't want them to be breaking even, and the stipend isn't entirely for childcare. So it became a little bit more complicated, which was the reason we decided to separate the two and to go for, a, in my opinion, the lower stipend amount. Uh, Matt? Hi. So, yeah, I, um, I think it's, you know, it, it needs to happen, right? I mean, I think that this compensation, need, the pro, the process of, of fixing compensation um, does need to happen. Uh, I noticed that um, I believe that the state representatives, there is a formula for an annual or biannual increase on their compensation. So I, I would propose that, you know, this might be something that can be taken up as a, as a bylaw, but I mean, the predictability function of it is, is the big issue because otherwise it just sort of, it, you know, we'll have endless debates about, you know, the right timing and is the teacher contract ratified? I mean, it's, I, I just think it's, it's, it needs to be fixed in a fair, equitable and, and reasonable, predictable way um, so that we can sort of make decisions about it. Um, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that this, that we got this sheet that doesn't include um, school committee or Jones. I, I think that's, you know, that, that really throws me off in terms of the conversation and, and having a number to talk about for this current year. Um, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm very interested in where things go with um, child and family care reimbursements and things like that. That being said, I, I lean towards, um, to me, that's an earmark. It's, it's, it's I, 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 I don't support that. I think, I think that that should be a consideration lumped into the overall uh, amount of the compensation and not some kind of a of a um, pilot standalone program. So although I, you know, I appreciate Sean and Paul putting that into the budget for this year, I, I don't think that's the way to go for compensation. And and um, I hope that the council sort of goes just just focus, just focuses on the stipend amount and, and just recognize that every single person, you know, comes into a volunteer elected position with their own set of financial realities. And, you know, rather than trying to parse out which ones are more important than than others. We just make the compensation the, the best fair compensation that we can um, and then hope that get, that gets the job done. And then and then some mechanism for um you know annual or or biannual increases as well to keep up not to keep up with inflation but to reflect inflation. Thanks. I think Lynn, were you next? Kathy's next. You want to go to Kathy? Kathy, go ahead. So if I focus just on compensation, I'm I'm uncomfortable with doubling. Um, I don't know what my lower number is. Um, and I'm uncomfortable with paying anything more for someone who takes on the chair of a committee. Um, so th it has, this had pieces. Um, so I don't know whether we want to, focus on amounts. I saw Michelle's memo to all of us, which took, she personally took insurance off the table, which I thought was a very wise decision. Um, I think insurance gets us into a whole nother piece. So I don't, I also um, would like, I, I would like a process that said, um, we're looking to do 
a certain percent a year, and whether it's a year or every two years, um, something like that with a review of that percentage as needed so that we don't have to periodically face a big jump, but we talk about whether we want to do this. I, I think of these as volunteer jobs. If I look at the amount of hours that the planning committee spends, um, the planning board, not the planning staff, um, it's way up there and especially way up there when the council gets active. <laughs> it's it's lots of meetings um, and repeat meetings. So I think uh, the town and when when I look at the charter documents, they're pretty interesting because one of the concerns is this would get to be a really expensive form of government. Um, especially since we are 13 councillors rather than nine councillors, as in Northampton. And the argument was, oh, no, don't worry. We're going to be saving a lot of staff time. The staff will spend far fewer hours. It literally, Lynn, in, in the prelude says the estimate is 600 fewer staff hours once we shift to the new form of government. So it will be just so much more efficient. Um, and so we, we clearly... We, we haven't, we have not achieved that level of efficiency in terms of draw on staff time. And I do think, um, you know, in terms of the time commitment, you know, when we talk about the money, the money is part of it, but the, the time commitment is part of it too. Um, if you were, you know, I think you're remarkable, Alicia, because you've got children and a job and you don't have, a, you know, a long-term partner. Um, it's it's these kinds of high hour intensity volunteer work aren't well suited to full time jobs, both parents working or single parents working with children, um, unless they have flexible hours. It, they're just tough. So I think what Lynn has started to do, which I really appreciate, is get the council meeting time under control. <laughs> You know, you know, and and a sample of two meetings does not say a trend is story. Three, three, three. three meetings, three. a sample of three meetings, but the 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 2023 trend is in the right direction. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and people, when we're still cheering when we get out, uh, and two to three uh, or or four hours, you can see how long. So I do think we need to worry about the amount of time that committees spend. And some of the committees, it's they are generating the time. Um, I For the committee like the school building project, that's a project that generates the time. But sometimes the committees themselves are taking on a large amount of work. Um, so I worry, I don't, so I'll, I'll end my long thing with saying, I don't believe we should pay chairs of council committees more then the council, the councilor stipend is the councilor stipend. And we've got a precedent of paying the president more than the rest of the councilors. And I'm fine with that. I'm not sure I'm ready to go to doubling. And, and that's my uh, piece. The family care, I think we should stay with the $5,000 pot and see how that works out. Because I think it's really tricky um, for doing it. I like the idea of it, that if people really need help, um, but if we go up on the salary, on the stipend, we may not need to be thinking of enriching that pool in the future. I'm in. I'm done. Okay, thanks. Uh, Lynn, I'm gonna, I put my sorry. hand up so I could get to be in order, but. Yeah, so it, please go ahead. And no, go ahead. Uh, no, I've already spoken once. So why don't Andy, you and Anna both go ahead and then I'll come back. Well, Anna. So I am very uh, in favor of the the family care provision. I think that's really important. I supported that as part of this this coming budget. Um, and I think one of my questions, Kathy, you had mentioned setting a regular schedule for reviewing this. I just want to check because the the way that compensation increases happen is set by the charter. And so um, I'm looking at the provision now. It doesn't necessarily prohibit a regular reevaluation, but it would need to fit within the parameters established. Um, and I'm just, I'm not sure if that kind of thing would need to be part of a charter review or if that can be something that we change knowing that it's 
under the the rules technically um it's not it's not expressly prohibited by the charter I, i'd be curious to explore that um as something that i don't know that it needs to happen you know every term i think that would be too much but i do think that having it be part of uh even part of a charter review or part of it you know a, every five years or every 10 year process would be um would be important so i i support that um and just generally wanted to voice support for the uh, family leave provision. And then the last thing was thinking through, you know, in terms of amounts, I think it's important to also recognize that folks who have um, hourly jobs or even sal salaried jobs where they might request leaves, uh, $10,000 is an amount that, you know, someone might be able to go to their, their to might be able to request a partial leave for, right? Whereas 5,000 is is much more negligible and it's harder to kind of justify that in terms of hours worked. So I think that that's, I, I agree with Alicia that in terms of actually making a dent on um, improvements to, to access, we will need to continue to reevaluate and look at what's kind of, what allows people to to do this and work, um, but just maybe work less, right? To to hold a forty hour a week job plus counsel um, is is really tough, and and I know that I don't have nearly as many challenges as other folks do. So, um, just naming that the the higher we go, the more likely it is that someone could either work fewer hours if they're in an hourly role or um, request leaves because it kind of covers that. So, thanks. So I've been thinking about this for a while, and I think about it in terms of uh, financial. I think of it in terms of process, and I think of it in terms of the politics of doing this. And um, I think we kind of probably all at the end are going to have to think about all of these things. Um, the process piece, um, I was very intrigued when I finally knew that there was Northampton report and was able to read it. Of course, that's fairly recent because it's only been about a month or so that it's been provided by the committee to the council um, in Northampton. They um, have an ordinance, which is in, uh, I think, one of the appendices to the report itself. And the um, ordinance is equivalent to a bylaw here. And what they've obviously done is taken their charter and used the ordinance to uh, flesh out a process that goes with it. And um, one of the things that uh, I thought was very helpful in dealing with the politics side of it is that by having no elected officials on the, um, re the body making the recommendation, that um, they've kind of uh, helped move it a little bit away from the politics side of it, at least in the initial, though I imagine that when the council actually gets around to voting on it, uh, it's going to be um, a, a, a political issue in and of itself. The council hasn't voted on it. This is a proposal that was made by the committee to the council there. Um, but I, I do, I am intrigued by it, and um, I wonder if, uh, you know, we had thought about it and methodically, if we would have come up with a process that would have had some of the investigative steps that Northampton had taken. I think that we were just so overwhelmed by other things on our plate at the time that we just um, never really got around to having a thorough discussion about how to go about this discussion. Um, and uh, I'd rather to have Amherst do its own discussion and its own investigation. So that's sort of my comments about the process side. I do think that we um, could make a process recommendation as a part of our report. Um, the financial, I think, um, is a troubling one and uh, uh, because it is a fairly significant increase. And given the pressure on the budget, um, if we start um, down a path that is going to have the cumulative increase in um, all of the compensation for elected officials uh, that are recognized in the charter, which is the Council and School Committee, um, 
you know, we, we get into the, we could very easily get to the point where what we're talking about is equivalent to one position in another department. And um, I think there's a financial question that we have to grapple with ourselves about um, what is, we, we heard a lot over the past month about the needs for staff positions in a variety of departments. And we also know that um, Amherst is in an unfortunate place as far as the amount of available funds for things that are beyond our control. Uh, and uh, mostly it's lack of uh, pilot for a large amount of land that is in the town limits that produces a lot of demands on municipal government. Uh, so I, I, I do think the financial uh, is a part of our responsibility, of course, and uh, I am troubled, therefore, by uh, and, uh, looking at the end of the amount that we're putting in and equating that to what else it might do within town government and thinking about it at least uh, in through one round of discussion on the question of financial consequence. The political piece, I think, is one that we're going to have to, uh, for the most part, leave to the council. Uh, one thing that is helpful is that um, we know from the Springs Gazette that there's uh, at least, uh, if uh, approved by the uh, union membership, the APEA has reached a uh, resolution to their uh, but uh, their, their negotiations over uh, benefits and salaries. It was a, uh, um, would have been very difficult uh, on a political basis to consider um, having a vote in the council. I would have found as a councillor very difficult to have a vote um, if there had been that, that contract outstanding. Uh, we do know that there are other contracts for municipal units that are still outstanding, so it hasn't gone away entirely. It's just uh, that, that was the one that had the most um, focus on it. So, um, kind of those are what my thinking has been on it has been kind of looking at and recognizing that there um, are these three elements to it and. Uh, uh, we need to at least be aware of it as we try and push forward. So with that, Lynn, let me go back to you. Yeah. Um, so I want to build on a couple pieces. Um, first of all, um, I've already been very clear where I stand on the family support, and I do definitely believe in that. Um, I, on the health insurance side, I think if the jobs were more like full-time jobs, like some city councilors are in large, much larger municipalities, then you can justify health care. But um, either most, most people who would be going for the council in Amherst probably have another job they're getting health care from, or they're uh, part of a family unit that's bringing health care or they in some way or another have gotten to the point they're supported by uh, healthcare. So I'm not in favor of doing the healthcare. Uh, in all honesty, I was actually a member of the commission that looked at the statewide elected official salaries and they did it for the very reason that people are talking about now. They did it so they could take it out of the political realm. And the recommendation in fact was formulaic and was also based on cost of living. So it was um, a very useful uh, way to take it again out of the political realm. And at the same time, uh, it didn't go into effect until the next term, as I recall. Hold on one second. I've been summoned by my family. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh... Okay, sorry. Um, Second of all, uh, I actually then decided just for the sake of discussion to 
play around with an Excel sheet. And I looked at, you know, what would have happened if we had gotten a regular, say, 3%, which has been kind of where cost of living has been between 2 and 3%, starting with 2019. We were seated in 2018. And if anybody's interested, I'm willing to share my little Excel sheet with it. But I did the same thing that um, Alicia and uh, Michelle have been recommending, and that is that I held I, all I did was take that number and then add 2500 for the person who's president um and you know it it doesn't bring us that far along but at least recognizes something that's much more in line with the kind of things we're negotiating in our existing contracts i i firmly believe that when the charter commission is seated for 2024 uh, one of the things we should ask them to look at is the possibility of a change in the charter that addresses this issue. Is there interest in uh, seeing uh, Lynn's spreadsheet? Well, hold it then, uh, Bob. Hold, hold on, um, I can do it, hold on. I think that would be useful. Uh, let's okay. I think my calculations are correct. So we started at five thousand. We're still at five thousand, and I. This is my parameter, and this is just whatever is here. It's this number plus twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. It still doesn't seem like much. And I have to say, I was pretty amazed and, and really want to thank Michelle and Alicia for the comparison work they did do uh, to particularly those uh, groups around um, the Western part of Massachusetts. Um, I, I feel very uncomfortable making this kind of recommendation as a seated elected official. Questions or comments on this, I'm more than willing to take it down. And I can also add that it be added, to, ask that it added, be added to the packet since it was shown at a meeting and it technically has to be. Okay, yep. Um, I, I get the same endpoint if anyone wants to know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. Hey, um, Bob? Yeah, I, I wanted to echo a, a couple of points. Uh, one is that I do think that um, this <clears throat> issue should be revisited with the Charter Commission. Uh, I guess they've been, there's a review next year is that right um yes so um i i think i i agree i think we should ask the charter commission to come up with a formula or recommend a formula we could do that uh where we have some way that it's taken out of um the political realm um and uh made more of a, a, a kind of a a general um you know process or, or general uh, way of increasing stipends to kind of account for uh, cost of living and other issues. Um, I do think given that the town just voted for a pretty large tax increase um, and you know we're getting higher water bills and sewer bills, um, I think I would recommend strongly that um, this council or that we do not recommend that this council uh, <laughs> takes us up this year. Um, I, I just don't think the timing is right. I don't disagree with the idea. I just think it needs um, it needs a better process and it needs to be somehow taken out of the political realm. I really believe that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, you know, when every, every time Congress votes to increase their salaries, there's a big uproar. <laughs> uh, 
so uh, it, whether it's deserved or not, I, I do think that there's a danger of, of uh, you know, the perception that, you know, the council is increasing their, their salaries at a time when the town's, you know, the rest of the town has to uh, pony up more money uh, for basic services. So it's a thought. Just I, I do think if it's taken out of the political realm and it's a regular kind of thing, it, it makes it much more palatable and it's it's easier to to kind of defend. Again, I, I support the idea in general. I just would recommend not doing it right now. Okay, thank you. Kathy, I'm going to ask you to take over for chairing for about one or two minutes because um, I'm going to have to step away for a second. But in any way, uh, Matt is next. Yep. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Andy. And thank you, Kathy. Um, yeah. So as a resident member with no political stake, I, I would just say from a finance committee perspective, um, I really think that this cost estimate needs to be redone by Sean at least including um, school committee, if not if not Jones trustees. I, I think for us to really take a look at the numbers of this, um, we would, you know, we just we just can't. We don't have a good picture of the financial out, um, outlay. And I, I haven't heard any explicit conversation about dropping one or the other. I, I can't imagine anybody in this room is, is suggesting that we would only make an increase to counselor salaries. So, you know, I, I just I just think for the sake of practically looking at the finances of it, we as a finance committee need to see the the full picture. Um, and, you know, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, one set, you know, 5,000 versus 10,000 versus, you know, 3%. But, but I just think we, we need a, we need a um, projection that reflects, you know, the reality of what we're potentially trying to do. Um, and, and that being said, you know, I, uh, well, I actually, I think that's enough. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm in the awkward position of wanting to say something, but also chair. So I'm going to hold my comment and first call on Alicia and then Anna. And now Bernie's hand is up. I'll go, I'll, I'll be the caboose. I'm also happy to wait for others to speak. Okay, Anna. So I think I, I hear... I hear what folks are saying in terms of concern about doing this right now. And I think it's important to remember that the reason why we do it now is to serve the next coming council. Um, and that this summer when people are deciding whether or not to run for council, this for some people, this is part of that decision. And I think that that's what we need to remember is that for some people, the stipend is not part of their decision and that's great. But for others who might not be able to do that, do this, that increased stipend might make that difference. And so, you know, Bernie, I hear you that uh, there hasn't been scientific data on this and maybe we can start studying it as we go because I, I, um, I think that the, one of the reasons there hasn't necessarily been data is that people haven't been doing this in, in, the, in the intentional way to, get, to have the intended result that we are having, right? And there is some research out there on impact on boards and committees and things like that, but, but I do think that it's important to do this now because if we don't do it, we miss another term. Um, and then we're gonna be at the same decision point again in two years, right? Looking forward to the next council. So it's, I think it's important to remember, we're not voting to raise our salaries. Um, those of us who are uh, elected as town councilors, we could lose our election, right? Like there is not a guarantee that we would benefit from this uh, if we are all running again. It, that's the other if. So um, I guess I, I wanna, take us out of it because we don't, and non-voting members aside, we don't know that we would be the beneficiaries. And that's why this process is, is designed the way it is, is so that we can look forward and say, this is what we're setting up for the next council. That's all. So Alicia, would you like to speak now or should I call on Bernie first? Um, Bernie can go, thank you. Bernie. Uh, you're, you're, you muted yourself. I have two screens here, my laptop and my big screen that has all the documents on it. And there's two mice and I occasionally grab the wrong one. Um, I gotta remember the blue one is what works this. Anyway, um, I'm not opposed to, first off, it's very difficult always for uh, an elected official, and again, having been there, to advocate raising their compensation. 
um, I, I appreciate that. That's it's hard, and I understand full well that this wouldn't take place now. It would be in the future after the elections. Um, I don't have a problem uh, with increasing the um, stipends, and again, I think it's a mistake to refer to them as salaries. Uh, increasing the stipends for for counselors to a reasonable sum of money, because you do incur, even though you're you're really not working on an hourly basis because uh, you'd be worth far away, far away more than that. Um, you do incur a lot of incidental costs in, um, in, in holding the office. And this is some way to offset those, those incidental costs. Uh, so I'm not disagreeing with, uh, with an increase for the counselor. Uh, how much, um, you know, you have what Northampton's suggesting, you have what, uh, What's what's here on the page? Uh, I think probably the uh, uh, the number is somewhere in between uh, is a way to start. I think we need a process to to do this in the future so that uh, counselors don't have are put in the awkward situation of debating their salaries um, until somebody uh, a neutral third party comes up and says you should be paid this. Um, so there's that. I think as we go forward with these discussions, we can eliminate the prospect of health insurance because. No one seems to be supporting it here. Um, and in fact, probably three quarters of the cities and towns of Massachusetts don't uh, pay health insurance for elected officials uh, uh, of, of the uh, uh, towns they've been affiliated with one way or another. 50% of them we didn't have uh, insurance for elected officials and the other 50% I worked to get rid of it. Uh, so I have a bias in that regard. So that's uh, that's where we're at, and and, and you know the the nobody I think nobody I've known is going to run for public office and all the stuff that goes on with it because um, they can give up on a job unless it's a full time position like say a city council in Springfield or Boston. Um, most of the time, it's people are are gonna calculate how what those incidental costs are and whether or not uh, the compensation with stipend will help offset those offset those incidental costs so you do broaden the pool um, but the pool doesn't necessarily look any different than the pool we have now so that's that, that's where I'm at in, in that regard so let's uh, let's hopefully move forward if we need to uh, if the council needs to appoint uh, uh, a committee made up of uh, non-elected types to uh, to take this matter up. That might be a way to, for the council to go. Uh, but again, I'm I I think that the stipends need to be raised, and I think they need to be raised to um, significantly. So thanks, Andy. Are you back to chairing? Yeah, I'll, I'm back to chairing. But um, why don't call, you go ahead? Yeah, then call, call on me. <laughs> okay. So I the. I have I have a timing question on this because I very much like what the process that Northampton had working for it, which was a pre-existing ordinance that has seven members on who could not be elected now and couldn't be formally elected. So they tried to get, you know, and and they were only two-year appointments. So if and I am totally uncomfortable on, um, I said it at the beginning, but I think um, doubling doubling our stipend, given the stress the town is under and given the large increase we just did with uh, a voluntary increase in uh, to pay for the school of our property taxes, which was very generous of the citizens. And I must say that I have had Several people tell me, and this, you wouldn't be surprised, they're from the finance department at the School of Management, feeling that the council isn't um, financially accountable in the way we should be, you know, really being tough on overall expenditures um, as they look at, as decisions made and accumulate. So I am uncomfortable of, about us voting a double, a doubling of our of our own stipend, even though we might not be the recipients of it. Timing-wise, 
if we said out of this committee, we want to immediately do an ordinance, if we have to do an ordinance, um, we seem to be able to set up advisory boards, all sorts of ad hoc committees, just with the stroke of a pen. And what Northampton has done is it made uh, the mayor or someone else appoint these, you know, so it wasn't that the council was appointing who would be on the advisory. Do we have time to set up a committee like this? Um, otherwise, what I could support is something less than the increase that's been proposed. I mean, Lynn came up with, if it had gone up 3% a year, we would be at something less than a thousand dollar increase. You know, clearly you would want to round it up. You know, are we at six, seven or eight? And Andy's point about the total, because there are 13 of us, and then Matt and Matt and others have pointed out, and we haven't even talked about the school committee, we're talking about a teacher. We're talking about a firefighter. We're, we're, we've been sitting here squeezing the operating budgets left and right as people are making extremely difficult decisions. So I think for the council at this time to talk about doubling our stipend is um, I don't feel financially accountable. I, I, won't, I won't support that is, I guess, the way I will say it more firmly. I don't want to waffle on it. I'm totally in support of the, the, the family pool and wanting to see how it works, because I could see it would get it into a, a lot of um, contra, uh, complications. But right now, it's been set up, and I would like to see how the town manages that. And I think that going forward, we might not need it if we eventually increase the stipends. Um, but I, I don't see me as a sitting councillor voting this type of increase. I think it needs to be taken out of our hands. Um, and I'll stop. Lisa. Um, thank you, Andy. Yeah, so I had a couple of comments, one of them Anna already made. And so I'll just reemphasize that even if we were to make this decision right now, it doesn't necessarily affect any current counselors. Um, and so it would be for the next council. Um, and that was my intention. And I, I believe Michelle's intention when we were writing this is that we want to expand who can and will run for council. Like that is the whole entire point. And so I think that this there, there really is no better time than right before an election because people who are perspectively thinking about running, this may influence their decision, which is much of what Anna said, but that was what I was also going to say. Um, and also that when I talk about diversity on the council and diversity and inclusion in like all town committees, um, I don't just mean racial diversity. I also mean like financial diversity, like people who are low income, um, and so again, like these conversations sometimes are very difficult for me to have as one of the only low income peoples, but I'm telling you because I have experience. So we may not have the data because there may not have been research done, but I have experienced this and I am living data that this would help people specifically in my position as a single parent with three children that I'm taking care of on my own raising the stipend. There may not be specific data pointed to council participation, but there is data in terms of stipends with public participation. Um, when I worked with a company doing an equity audit, they had taught us that if we want caregivers and families and peoples to participate in our audit and our surveys, we offer them stipends. That is how you build participation. So that there is data on that actually, that looking at stipends and fair stipends does increase participation. Um, and so I think like this is really not as abstract as we're trying to make it seem. I think it's very simple. Like we need to offer a more fair compensation for this job in order to allow more people to run and to be successful counselors. And so when we're also talking about the idea of um, paying chairs more, which I'm honestly not married to, um, just as a thought, I think increasing the stipend overall would be an accomplishment in itself. Um, but just to explain where that idea came from, it's, it's the amount of work that goes into that position. 
um, and making sure that counselors can do their job effectively. Um, and so again, just bringing my personal experience into this, since we don't have real live data, is that uh, when, the, when the council first started, um, I was able to take all my council meetings with my camera on. This is something that a lot of people say to me, like, why do you not have your camera on? Well, this is because I do not have childcare because I very quickly found out that I will use my entire stipend to pay for somebody to watch my kids during a meeting. And I could much more benefit from that stipend to put food in my house than to pay for people to watch my kids to be on a meeting. And so my kids are with me when I am on my meetings, jumping all over me, running around the house. I am putting them to bed while we are on council meetings. This is why my camera is off. If I could compensate somebody to be in my home and to help me with these things, I could one, not only be in the town room with my colleagues, which is what I actually would love to do, but I could too more fully participate and be present in my meetings, which I think I deserve to do as a counselor, but cannot do because it is not fair compensation. And so there are a lot of other things. And that's why we said family care, because it, other people don't have children, but they may have an elderly parent or another person in their home who they need to take care of, who would need to be taken care of in order for them to effectively participate on the council. And it's about being effective. And it's about being a good counselor. And it's about being able to get your work done, being able to be present. Um, because the other thing is like, I know it is optional to be on other committees as a counselor, but I have found that the less I participate in other committees, the more confused I am at the council level. So like the more available I am to go to, to go to fin uh, finance committee meetings, the more available I am to check in on TSO meetings or CRC meetings, the more informed I am, the better job I can do, the more knowledgeable I am about the decisions I'm making at the council level. And so honestly, it benefits the town overall, I think. So I just wanted to offer those things. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, something that's been really something I'm frustrated by in this conversation is that, you know, when Alicia and Michelle brought this proposal forward, they followed the process as it was designed. And we are finding flaws in our process and faults in our process, but we cannot fault the sponsors of this for following the process as it was written. And so my concern with voting this down in order to create a study is one, gosh, we do that a lot. And it's, it really feels to me like we're shirking our responsibility. That is not to say I don't think that a study would be important or that uh, having a, a commission made of non-council folks would be the best approach to actually fixing our process. I think that that's true. But I think to ignore, just to say, well, we don't like the process the way it was written, so we're going to create a, a, a commission to do this better, um, negates the fact that it's still our process and, and the sponsors followed our process as written and we cannot fault them for doing that. And I think that it does them a disservice by, by ignoring this because we just don't like the way that it, the rules are, right? Um, we can change the rules and I think that we should support this measure. I think both are true. Um, I also want to just note a couple of things. Bernie, I, I disagree. I think that there are folks and something I, I'm challenged by often is that there, there have been a lot of times on council where I've had to use myself as a personal example and otherwise people don't believe me um, when I say things are things are the case. And, and I recognize that I am not always the true story for everyone, right? But there is also truth in my story and truth in my experience. And, and um, I wanna make sure that that is heard. And so I hope that folks do believe that when people say, you know, I would be able to take time off of work to commit to council, if I made $10,000 a year, that is true. That is something that I would be able to go to. My, I don't know that my boss would agree to it. It makes me very uncomfortable to say it in a public meeting because now they might know that I'm gonna do that if this gets upped and I get reelected. But all of that said, that is a reality for, for people um, who, who might have that flexibility. Um, and it makes a difference, right? I uh, am able to do a compressed work week during the summer. So I work my entire 40 hours, Monday through Thursday. It's a little brutal, but then Fridays I hypothetically have off, which means Fridays I spend the full work day doing council. And I'm a much better counselor in the summer because I've had that dedicated time versus sporadically throughout random breaks in my day and after work. So I do think that there's, um, and, and Bernie, I'm not faulting you. I'm not discredit, like I'm, I didn't take it personally at all. I just wanna make sure people know that this, there are different subsets of people where this impacts deeply. Um, and the more that it 
the more that it increases, the broader that subset of people. Um, and then the last point that I think is really important to make is we've been talking a lot about family care and child care. Um, and there's always going to be a second prong to that approach, which is that we need to also be advocating on a state level for more funding for this, right? If we're finding that we need to um, subsidize or support family care for our elected officials, one, what a privilege that we're able to do that. It's an incredibly important thing. And two, it shouldn't be a privilege. It should be a right. And we need to make sure that we are also advocating on a state level for universal pre-K, for increased funding for things like that, so that we aren't faced with this problem at a local level. Um, because we're only impacting how many ever folks would, would benefit on the council. And there's plenty of other people in our town that would really uh, need that support as well. So those are my main three points. Thanks. Uh, Bernie? Uh, yeah, I, I understand it. I mean, I used, like I said, I used my, I was fortunate enough to have a considerable amount of vacation time. So I took a lot of vacation time and I was fortunate enough to have a boss. And when I would go to her and say, gee, I really need to, and she would go, okay, this mm, fine. And she'd sign the sheet and I'd take time off. So I understand that. I, I mean, um, this, this gray hair, uh, got here by something more than just simply aging. Um, you know, raised a family, uh, been involved for um, more time than I, I care to count with uh, municipal governments and local governments. So, um, you know, I, that's why I said I'm very supportive of having paying people a reasonable, giving people a reasonable stipend to, to help compensate for the hassle factor involved. I've known people who have done, um, who are self-employed, who get elected to boards and committees. And I always warn them, <laughs> you know, especially if you're self-employed, people think you have all the time in the world because you work for yourself. Now, you know, you, you, you can't do that. And you, you can't continue, you can't exploit people and you can't expe expect people to volunteer when you make things uh, very difficult. And so uh, along with, <clears throat> um, you know, better stipends, we have to have serious discussions about civility. We have to have serious discussions about time commitments overall. Um, we have to uh, uh, look hard at how much support is given to the uh, uh, to the council uh, and how we how we staff our our town. So there's a bunch of other things that go into this. And uh, uh, again, um, you know, I I can use myself and. I can use myself as an example, but um, you know, and as I said, when you increase the stipend, you broaden the pool, but the pool doesn't look any different from what it does now. So, um, uh, you, you know, you you in terms of uh, uh, in in terms of, of um, who um, chooses to run. Uh, so we have to work on not only finances, we've got to look, look, work on some other factors as well. And, and I think civility is one of them and, and the kind of exposure that you're, uh, uh, you put yourself up to when you're, you're elected to a public office. Uh, so all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you find that um, people are writing nasty letters to the editor about you or leaving, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I ended up installing a second phone line and uh, with just my name on it to handle all the crank, crank calls I got. Uh, so he, he, there's there's a lot of other expenses involved um, in, in running for public office. And I think people need to be, a, be um, aware of that and uh, as well. So thanks. So where I think that we are at in this discussion is that we actually seem to have a consensus on some things, but we, and we have one big one where we don't have consensus. Um, but I think that where we seem to possibly have consensus is that uh, there's not an interest right now in pursuing the health insurance coverage and that uh, I think that uh, we're not in a place where we want to make that recommendation for this round of the discussion uh, and would leave at best leave that for a future process that so we've talked about. Um, in the future that we would like to see some kind of improvement on the current process uh, that would um, involve something like Northampton has, which is a 
a committee composed of people who are not elected officials who are appointed to actually um, give the kind of consideration that they gave to this and make some specific recommendations to, but that um, that's something that needs to be left aside other than the observation that we can report that we think that it ought to be explored for the future and that we would look to the um, possible charter review committee um, as the um, appropriate place to do that or another um, mechanism if that becomes um, more, more preferable. Uh, I think that there is there seems to at least generally be a consensus right now of uh, treating continuing to treat the family care as a separate item and uh, to uh, take advantage of the money that's been set aside in the budget that begins July 1st and um, see how quickly it goes and uh, see what difference it makes and um, come back to that issue um, uh, after there's some experience that um, we've had with it, which then gets to the last point is that I think that the general consensus seems to be that we um, do think that there's some adjustment that needs to be made in the compensation, but that that's where we're probably um, least coming together on a specific recommendation. Um, and uh, the uh, I think that the, there's a feeling that something needs to be done now, and there would be benefit to making this happen on a more regular basis as opposed to uh, happening uh, so that you have to deal with it as a large single jump at one time. Uh, but uh, we're, I don't see that we've come together to um, at this point yet to make a recommendation. Uh, so I was, and, and I guess the last thing that I wanted to say is in, in my review of this whole thing is that there's discussion that's been made about other elected officials. And of course, the charter includes the school committee, does not include the library trustees. Um, the school committee is in a very um, strange place on this issue, the, at least the current school committee. And that is that if you look at our budget, um, the school committee stipends are actually in the town manager's budget, I believe, and not in the uh, not not in the school budget, because the school committee of itself feels that um, they would not have made that the priority choice for uh, allocation of of school budget funds, and. Uh, that uh, for that reason, um, from the time we've started this charter implementation five years ago until now, uh, that's kind of been that it's uh, been uh, recognized as a part of the town budget, not the school budget, um, because it's, uh, that's what the for the reasons that I just stated. So I, um, that's not part of the summary, but I think that I wanted to point that out too. Um, is there a general feeling that um, the other points that I've raised, there seems that there's agreement that there's consensus around those points, recognizing the big one that needs to be decided yet, Kathy? Um, yeah, Andy, I, th I think you did a good summary. Um, I had a question. Um, you know, I've said I would not be in favor of doubling. I am in favor of something between five and 10. So my question is, do we want to, and I am looking at the total impact of, of what that is, and also that since this would be the next council, it would be a half a year because it would start in January of next year. Um, and so I need to know whether we have room in the budget for that and what the impact is. So 
you know, we've got a proposal to go from five to 10 and the related increase. Um, and as I said, I am not in favor of paying chairs an additional amount. I would just do stipend and just want to focus it. So I, I raised that, Andy, when I think when you took a brief piece in the original proposal, it was both a doubling and an extra payment if you're a chair of a, a committee. And I am not in favor of that. Um, for starters, I don't want people to hold on to chairness for money. I would like to see chairs rotating or people be able to come on and off of it. But in any case, I don't know whether we need to come up with a up or down on five versus 10. Um, Bernie seems to be in favor of the 10. I don't know how others feel. Um, would we want to talk about something less than 10? And how much time do we have? I just don't know. The council's looking for something for us and we could punt on the stipend and say we, we had a long discussion about it, but do we want to say something more? And that's, so for example, eight, Going to eight would be um, a more than a 50% increase. It would be about a 60% increase, which is a substantial increase. And then recommending that we try to set up a process that would address this two years from now or something, but not, we wouldn't have to put the detail of it. So that's, that's my question of how much more do we need to do at the finance committee level? Um, it's pretty easy to do the math on, five times 13 people, 5,000 more each, 3,000 more each. It's it's pretty easy math. Um, that was my both question and comment. Okay. Um, let me call the man a second, but I just wanted to make the observation that if uh, we don't come up with an amount and um, we're essentially punting it back to the council and um, we're, the council is going to have the same difficult discussion that we had, and I'm not sure that they would get there any faster. I think that they may actually appreciate um, a recommendation. That's that's where I was going, Andy. It, it would just you know to to say we had difficulty when it came to the number doesn't seem like we're providing much help. Um, no, I I realize that, but it was kind of where we were at. Um, I think that in the few minutes we're going to have to make a decision. I know that Matt is, was, has a time limit, and I don't know how much he has left. Um, but uh, we um, could, if we did it fairly quickly, have one more meeting to talk about that issue um, and the third quarter report and just leave it to those two, two issues and try and do one additional meeting after we've had some time to think about it. Uh, but we'd have to do it fairly quickly because the council does need to act. Uh, I believe July 2nd is the uh, date where we hit upon the first 18 months of the current council, which is what the charter sets as a limit. Matt? Yeah, I just um, I want to uh, say I agree with Kathy that really, you know, within if finance can make a, an actual dollar recommendation, I, I think we'll be doing, you know, justice to the town. Like, I think that'd be appreciated and and is sort of our job on some level. That that being said, I I, I don't think we could do it today. I, I do think we need another meeting. Um, I, I would have a really hard time supporting anything that didn't include um, other bodies. You, you know, I think I, 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 or at least a lengthy, more of a discussion about the explicit reason why we would increase town councils uh stipends and not others I, I think that that would be um a, a sticking point for me although you know there may be a rationale behind it that I'm just not fully understand I, I heard what you said I just I'm not sure I I'm not sure that that artic that articulation means to me that we wouldn't um recommend an increase across across the board and I I also don't I, I somebody said we we had consensus about um the child care as a second or child slash family care as a second item and I know I and, and I heard at least one other person say that you know, we'd rather see the overall stipend be reflective of the cost of doing the cost of this volunteer commitment, which I think is a very and and um a very way good way of putting it. And and I, I I would continue to stick with that to Alicia's point that we're looking for a for a genuinely diverse you know council or or body, which means you know people in poverty for whether or not they have or, or everybody has their own economic circumstance. And you know I think as much as I I want to you know support families and and people supporting themselves 
their their loved ones um you know i i do think that personally i think one stipend that that sort of rules them all is is the appropriate way to go on that and i'm happy to discuss i could my, my mind could be changed but that's based on where this conversation has gone so far thank you Alicia. Um, thank you, Andy. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that I'm I am okay with letting go of the insurance piece. That's fine with me. I'm in agreement with that. Um, and then for the stipend piece, again, it's a little bit complicated because my like I would like to recommend a specific number to the council. Uh, when I had these conversations with Michelle, I thought ten was too low, um, and I still think ten is too low. I think it's a start. Um, so that is why again we we added the family care piece that was a result of me thinking that 10 was too low so i also hear where matt is coming from in terms of just offering a higher stipend that was my initial thought in approach uh, but also then it becomes more complicated in terms of our town's budget overall and maybe not everyone needs the compensation for childcare. So it sort of lessens the burden on the town's piece, which was our figuring in this. Um, but I would also support a way higher increase because that is what I think. I think we're in line for an increase that is similar to what was recommended by the Northampton board. I don't know. I don't actually think our budget could sustain that, which is why this is what I thought was the alternative. Um, and I know we don't have specific numbers and I thought, so I'm not sure if I'm wrong, but that the recommendation was to increase the stipend for also the school committee. I think that was included in the recommendation. Um, and so because we're looking at going from 5,000 to 10,000, that's pretty much a double. If we needed a quick estimate, a quick, more realistic estimate, all we would need to do is ask how much do we currently have set aside for stipends for council and school committee and times two. That's a very simple way to get a more reasonable estimate. Um, so I don't know if we have those numbers readily available. Um, and I would also be happy to have more of a conversation about this because again, I would support a higher stipend, but I didn't think that everyone would, which is why, again, I think that 10 is a safer bet and is still a substantial enough increase that it would make a difference where as opposed to eight i don't think makes much of an impact Bernie, um i think what we're going to end up doing is having to come up with some kind of uh, political compromise here that um so uh, certainly another meeting is in order um we're we're looking at this to happening January 1, um, 2024. Uh, so, you know, we're, you know, it's, it is a half a year. Um, money is tight all over. Uh, you know, we, we said to the school committee, we're not going to give you $84,000, but, you know, to turn around and say, well, we'll give you $50,000 more for uh, stipend increases, I think not go over well. Uh, I sort of like what Lynn did um, with her table. Um, you know, we uh, the magic 3% um, cost of living adjustment, which seems to be written in stone somewhere in Massachusetts, because that's what we see time and time and time again. Um, using a peg like that, you know, this is what we've, uh, this is what's been done for uh, employees, um, you know, to, to do something that, that is an interim step because we, we all seem to agree that we need a better process to address this. Um, if we can come up with a better process that will work by, uh, uh, then in, in short order, then that's one thing. The other thing would be to come up with an interim number and say, this is a, this is a peg. This is what we're starting with just because we don't have a good process and just because it is in some ways unfair to have elected officials uh, debating their compensation. So, so that, that would be my thought for the next meeting that we have is we, we, we come up with something that, um, that has a basis for, uh, uh, you know, that, that we can point to uh, that's, that seems to be fair and, uh, and, and start there. Not that that's going to get us far in terms of what I believe is a real compensation, but it's a way to start. Thanks. 
So um, we need to turn to that last subject on the agenda for a moment and find out um, when uh, we're available for the next period of time. I'm assuming, as I said previously, that we're going to be meeting once or twice a month between now and when the uh, budget uh, guidelines are on us again in November. Um, and then those last couple months of the current council, we're in that scramble to finish out our terms and um, do budget guidelines because they can't wait till the new council uh, and meet with the uh, budget process. And that's the way it is. Uh, so knowing that we're talking about one or two meetings a month, uh, can we agree now or do we need to do, would it be easier to get, um, ask Athena to do some kind of poll on Monday? Andy, uh, this committee has to meet at least once prior to the 26th of June in order to bring any proposal in cancer compensation forward. So as right. much as I'm very much interested in us coming up with a meeting, I think what I'm also hearing from people is we need to do this particular item as, and our, our last meeting prior to July 2nd is presently scheduled for June 26th. Uh that going to be really too late to is what what council meeting comes after the 26th not until the july 17th so we need to be deciding we need to get something to the council prior to june 26th yes yes absolutely and i also want to point out that we had already polled for the 16th in the afternoon, and we had uh, did not have consensus on that time. I know. Um, Alicia, you've been the one who's um, had uh, the tightest scheduling challenges. Are you able to share with us uh, where you are for the next um, period of time so that we know what works for you? Um, yeah, I could do, so our current schedule still works for me. I could essentially do any day of the week that we don't have a council meeting um, after five, um, but Fridays, I also don't work. So while I also jam pack them with appointments, it's free. So like I can schedule around any time on a Friday. That also doesn't conflict with elementary school building committee. <laughs> but yeah, so like Fridays at one are usually good for me. Um, I could do another time on Friday. I could still do a 5.30 on a Tuesday um, or a Wednesday, Thursday. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, so if we're going to be doing that, um, and it was going to be a Friday, um, it's either the 16th or the um, 23rd with a very quick turnaround. Um, and doing a report that is going to be as ready as we can do it and fill it in and get it to the council for the 26th, but there wouldn't be a time to have a collaborative process on the development of the report. One of us would really need to do it. If, if you need a quick reaction, I cannot do the 23rd. I could do the 16th. Um, and I have no idea about the end of the day. I'm just, I'm going to be on another continent. Um, so as we get to the late afternoon hours, um, that may be an advantage to everyone. I will be groggy because it'll be late at night. <laughs> I'll be, on this, I'll be on this continent, but I'm in the same boat as Kathy. I cannot do the 23rd, but I could do the 16th. Is there anyone who can't do the 16th? Uh, I can't, but that's okay. Um, 
I not a voting member. I can offer my comments in writing to the uh, group before you uh, you meet. It'd probably be a badly worded rehash of what I sort of mumbled through earlier. Okay. Um, Alicia has her hand up. I know that Alicia does. Uh, sorry that I'm beginning to lose my voice a little bit. Um, we know from um, what Athena told Michelle this morning that if any of us um, wants to share thoughts with the committee um, in advance of a meeting, it has to be by a memorandum that is going into the packet because it becomes it needs to be a public document. Um, um, and even with that, I would want to make sure that Athena is comfortable with that since she's the uh, one who's our guru on the topic of uh, making sure we're in compliance with all rules. So um, I'm not against memos as long as um, Athena is comfortable with the process. Um, Alicia. Um, I am available on the 16th, but it's also my child's graduation. So I might be slightly like I might join at 1.30 again. I have two kiddos graduating that week. Oh, congratulations. It, it, would be good to, it would be good to set a time that Alicia can make it to start. But, you know, so I wasn't wedded to one, 1.30 is okay or two. Yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to convene and then wait. So it would be better to to pick a time when you can actually be with us at the beginning, Alicia. So. So couldn't we agree on 1.30? And what we'll do is uh, take up the uh, third quarter report if there are any final questions about it at that um, this first item. And it's only two item meeting. That's what the agreement is. And Andy, what what might help in terms of efficiency, and I have no idea, um, but if you encapsulize that we're, we've got three or four separate issues that we need to make a decision on, and you did that in writing back to us. So what we've talked about is, you know, are we increasing the stipend? If so, to how much? Um, yes or no on the family um, pool? Uh, we made a decision on health insurance, I think, so we can take that off the table. And then the, my third would be, um, do we need to consider school committee at all? And my fourth is, are we going to want to propose a process? You know, so do something, but and propose a process, which is what Bernie said, is, you know, like do the interim. So if you could just get us that list back in some way that makes sense to you with words, then we could start out with a, a structured conversation about it. That that would be helpful to me. Andy, let me just add, um, we can make those into motions and have a motion sheet. Yeah, Lynn, so that's what I was looking at, you know, just separate them out and then we could do them one at a time. We could do, if there's something we all agree on, we could do it first. <laughs> so, right. yeah, thanks. Okay. Um do the best I can, and I will consult with Athena about making sure that right. I'm doing it in an appropriate fashion. She can help make develop the motions too. And it, um, it's it's basically a shorthand set of bullets from what we've been discussing already. So it's not I don't I'm not asking you to render opinion as much as to just say we've separated it out to these elements, and that's what we're going to be discussing next time. It's yeah, kind I think that in the end. Uh, the big discussion I think we know is going to be the amount of increase if that we would recommend um, if we recommend an increase at all. And Correct. That that's really where the focus of the discussion needs to be. So that said, um, I don't think there's uh, Lynn. Your hand is up. Yes, let me just mention this is a posted item on the agenda for Monday's council meeting. I will be removing that so that the council will not be engaging in that discussion on Monday without the recommendation of the Finance Committee. And then I also wanted to mention that a person has been in the audience with their hand raised. I don't know if they realized we'd already had public comment. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go back and uh, 
if the per um, ask that person if they would um, could uh, if they could just um, offer their comment in a couple of minutes, it would be helpful. It might be helpful to know if we we are needing to adjourn. So, but I um, want to value our commitment to public comments. So, why don't you um, bring uh, that individual into the room? And uh, let's do it real quickly. And I think that we have a date for the next meeting and a time, which is 1.30 on the 16th. Um, I have promoted them to panelists three times. And uh, it doesn't seem to be working. Okay. We try allow to talk. Ah, uh, there okay. Okay. Uh, would you uh, like to um, identify yourself and where you live? And then if you can say who, um, off your comment in a couple of minutes, we would really appreciate it since we're- And they have to unmute, Andy. Yep, but you do have to unmute. I've asked them to unmute, but then they have to unmute. Um, I've sent a an ask to unmute to the person, or at least my computer is saying it. I've done that. Um, can you unmute? Um, because if not, then I think we need to go on and adjourn. So, because, uh, if they if they send you a comment by email, Andy, you can share with the committee. That's we we've been getting comments for the school building committee that way, and just a request to share with the whole committee. I'm sorry that I don't seem to be able. I'm trying to. I I, I am sending a message that said ask to unmute, but maybe it's not going through for some reason. Possible they stepped away from their computer too and didn't yeah. like. You said their hand. Okay, so I think we're going to just have to uh, close it out. That um, if uh, anybody, um, as you said, is um, wants to offer comment to the committee, they are always welcome to do that in writing. Though so, um, you should just be aware that when you offer comments to anybody, any committee, or the council as a whole that it is a public document and uh, we'll need to, it will go into the packet. Um, but what you were gonna say at the meeting would have been public too. So um, with that said, um, I don't think we have anything else today. I know that Matt had to leave um, and uh, we have our plan for a very limited next meeting. And uh, so with that, I think we'll uh, treat it as adjourned. And, uh, Thank you. This has been a very healthy and helpful discussion. So thank you.